Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk all about our anomaly detection engine rules in IBM Curator, also known as ADE rules. Now, one of the most important differentiating factors between IBM Curator and any other SIM solution that's there in the market is what ADE based rules brings to the table when we are talking about IBM Curator. Now, as the name signifies, ADE rules looks at anomaly, looks at deviation from learner trends. This means that unlike your correlation rules, which we have covered in our previous video, you know, we had uh, our event rules, flow rules, common rules, offense rules. Unlike those rules, which are looking at real time data, ADE based rules look at historical data. First, they learn from that historical data and then match what they have learned with the present data trends that they are seeing. And then they trigger the rules. That's what ADE rule is all about. Now, ADE rule, under ADE rule, you can create three types of rule. First is threshold based rules. Now, threshold based rules. Now, as the name signifies, threshold based rules, in case of threshold based rules, you define a threshold. Any deviation from the threshold, or rather, if that threshold is breached, then that type of rule gets triggered. The second type is anomaly rules. Now, as the name signifies, it looks for anomalies. It looks for deviations from the learner trend. In other words, you define a trend, a, a learning season, if I may say so. If there is any deviation from that learning, then that rule gets triggered. That is your anomaly based rule. And the third type is your behavioral rules. Now, in case of behavioral rules, it also looks into deviations. It means that together with the normal trend, it also looks at deviations from the normal trend and learns this whole thing and then matches that with the trend that it is seeing and then that rule triggers based on whether the deviation uh, that it has seen uh, is within a particular threshold or not. That's behavioral rule. So in case of behavioral rule, you have seasons as well, which defines the baseline behavior, as well as the deviations from that base, deviations as well. That is also learned. And then that rule triggers. Now, as we go into the details of this threshold anomaly and behavioral rules, then we'll understand in detail how these rules actually work. Now, as I've said right in the beginning, that in case of ADE based rules, it needs to have a defined set of historical data. That's why if you go to offenses, go to rules, and you go to actions, you do not have the option of creating ADE rules. You have the option of creating your event rule, flow rule, common rule, and offense rule. That's something that we have covered in our previous video. But you do not have the option of creating ADE based rules. For creating ADE based rule, you first need a saved search. Again, what is a saved search? That's something that is covered in our other videos. So I'm not going to go into the details of how to create a saved search, but I've already created a saved search. And this saved search will be the base on which my ADE rules will be created. Uh, this saved search that I've created, uh, I've named it as test one, two, three. This looks at last five minutes, all the events that have been received by this curator deployment grouped by log sources. As you can see, there are quite a lot of log sources that for, which have been sending events to this curator deployment. And from here, if I go to rules and then I see this option of creating anomaly, behavioral or threshold rules, the three different type of AD rules that I talked about. First, let's look at threshold. Now, as the name signifies, and as I've said, said before, in case of threshold rules, you define a threshold. If that threshold is breached, then this rule triggers. Now, this is pretty different from your anomaly rule, right? Where in case of anomaly rules, it looks at a deviation. Whereas in case of behavioral rule, as I said, it, it, it looks into the deviation as well. It's learning also includes those deviations and then that rule triggers. Now, let's look at, let's first create a threshold based rule. Uh, once I click 
clicked on that, the ADE rules wizard opens up. It shows up this window. It asks me which type of rule do you want to create? I've already selected threshold, so that is highlighted here. I click on next and in here, the filter parameters that are present, those are pretty different from our correlation rules that we've looked at. Now let's, uh, what I'll do is, you know, I'll, I'll quickly fill in uh, these parameters and then we'll go into the details of how how this rule will work. So I'm going to quickly put in a rule name and then I'm going to click on accumulated property. Let it be source IP. That should be fine. Um, is greater than, let's say, five. Let's say that should be a good number here. So I'm going to put in five. Click on submit. And I'm going to say not one minute interval, but let's say five minutes interval. Yeah, no, or, or one minute should be good enough because my uh, one minute should be good enough. Yeah. All right. So let's learn or let's understand what this rule is going to look at. Rule name is test one, two, three. That's okay. It says this rule when time series data is being aggregated by log source and when the source IP is greater than five accumulated in one minute interval. What it means is if the number of source IPs that are present is greater than five and this is accumulated in a one minute interval, then this rule will trigger. That means that in a one minute interval, because that accumulation has done and is being done in a one minute interval, that's what I've defined again. I can change this one minute as well. If in the one minute interval, if the number of source IP addresses is greater, source IP addresses that are seen is greater than five, then this threshold based rule will get triggered. Here the threshold is five. That's what I've defined. Now, if I click on next, the rule response page for AD rules are different, are pretty different from our typical correlation rules that we have learned about in a previous video. If you see over here in the rule response page, the first thing interesting thing is the dispatch new event is selected by default and you can't uncheck it. Now the obvious question is why can't I set the SRC values, the severity, relevance and credibility values like, like I had done for my correlation rules? The simple reason being any AD rule that we talk about in Curata, they do not look at a single event. They look at historical data and match that learning trend with the present trend. So it's not depend. It's not dependent on a single event or a single flow record. That's why you can't set the SRC values individually. And that's why the rule response page in case of AD rules is different. As a rule response, you can, of course, as I said, by default, the dispatch new event will be selected. Now on that dispatched event, you can, of course, generate an offense. You can create an offense. You can, of course, you know, together with that, send out email alerts. Maybe add this to a reference set, or for that matter, execute a custom action as well. That's also fine. But you can't set the SRC values. Reason is something that I told you guys a few minutes back. You do have the option of setting a response limiter, and if you check this, enable this rule right now, and click on finish, this rule gets created, and the rule starts working. Of course, I'm not going to click on finish. I'm just going to click on cancel and move on to my next type of rule, next type of AD based rule, which is anomaly rule. Now, as the name signifies, anomaly looks at deviation from its learned trend. So you do have an option in case of anomaly rules to select your deviation percentage as well. On which parameter should the deviation be looked at? All those options you get over here. Now, once you click on anomaly rule, the ADE uh, rules wizard page opens up. It asks you, what do you, what type of rule do you want to create? Since I've selected anomaly, uh, that is already highlighted here. I'm going to click on next. And then the rules filter, the anomaly rules filter are again a bit different here. So there you go. So these are the different anomaly based rule filter that you have. You know what? Let's first quickly create the rule. And then we'll understand how this rule works. So I'm going to create and I'm going to select the accumulated property. It can be anything, but I'll still select source IP since that's the option that we had selected when we were creating our uh, our threshold-based rule. 
source IP in the last one minute is only 40 percent different. Yep, looks good. So let's understand what this rule is about. This rule is saying where the number of source IP, the average value rather of the number of source IPs that this deployment has seen in the last one minute. Again, I can change this one minute to some other value as well. But for now, it's uh, we have selected one minute. So what this is saying is if the number of source IPs, the average number of source IPs that it has seen in the last one minute is at least 40% different from the number of source IPs it has seen in the last 24 hours, then this rule will get triggered. Again, okay, rephrasing it. In the last 24 hours, this curator box would have seen uh, lots of source IP addresses. The average value of that, if it is different by at least 40% compared to what it has seen in the last one minute, then this rule will get triggered. So what your anomaly rule is doing is it is looking at a deviation. If I click on next, I'm not going to cover the rule response page because this is some for AD based rules because this is something similar across all the type of AD rules uh, that you can create. Uh, so yeah, so the dispatch new event, for example, has been selected, has been checked, and you cannot uncheck it. You can generate an offense based on the dispatch event. You can send out an email. You might want to, you know, you can also execute a custom action. You have the option of setting a response limiter, and that's about it. Now, why do why can't you set the SRC values uh, for over here as a, as a rule as a rule response? The reason is the same. Uh, why we could not do that for uh, our threshold based rule as well, because as I said before, ADE based rules are not dependent on single events or flow records. They are based on a trend, and that's why you don't have the option of setting the SRC values. Now, if I click on finish, this anomaly based rule will start working. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to move to our last type of anomaly based rules, which is my behavioral rule. Now, behavioral rule, as I said right in the beginning, it also looks at the deviations. It also learns from the deviations as well. So together with the normal trend, it also looks into the deviations that it would have seen when it was learning and then matches that with the present trend. So that's why in case of behavioral rules, you do encounter some new terms as well. The first one being season. Now, what is season? Season defines the baseline behavior. You also have something known as current traffic level, CTL, that I'm highlighting right now. Now, CTL, it defines the weight of the original data with seasonal changes and random error accounted for. Another term that we have here is current traffic trend. Current, oops, current traffic trend, that is CTT. What does CTT stand for? It talks about the weight of change in data for each time interval. Then we have the current traffic behavior, CTV. CTV stands for weight of the seasonal effect on each learning period. And finally, the season. Season, as I said, it defines the baseline behavior. The season length uh, is something that we can define. In the default option, it is selected as T. Now let's first quickly fill in these parameters and then we'll understand what this rule is looking at. I'm going to select accumulate property and I'm going to set that as source IP address for our better understanding. Uh, yes, there you go. I clicked on submit and I'll leave the current traffic level, current traffic trend and the current traffic behavior to the default values that's 70, 30 and 30 and the season length as T. Now let's look into what this rule means. So this rule is again, looking at the number of source IP addresses. And the season length, that's a, uh, that's a baseline behavior, is defined for a day. That is a training period is for a day. Now, in there, it's going to assign a 70 weightage on a scale of 0 to 100 for the current traffic level. And then for the current tra traffic trend, it's going to assign a weightage of 30 and the current traffic behavior is going to assign a value of 30. And then it looks at whether the actual value deviates by a margin of at least 50% of the extrapolated, that is a predicted value. If it does, then this rule triggers. 
Again, rephrasing what I said, let's take a step back and first rephrase these three terms that we just looked at current traffic level. What did, what does current traffic level mean? It means the weight of the original data with the seasonal changes and random error accounted for. What have we assigned? We've assigned it a value of 70 on a scale of 0 to 100. Current traffic trend, uh, what does that stand for? It talks about the weight of the change in data for each time interval. What's the value that we've assigned for it? 30 on, again, a scale of 0 to 100. And then we have the current traffic behavior, which talks about the weight of the seasonal effect for each period. What's the value that we have assigned to it? 30 on a scale of 0 to 100 again. Now, based on these assignments, the number of source IP, if it deviates by at least 50% from the extrapolated or the predicted field or field value, which is a predicted value for the source IP address. If the deviation is at least 50% or rather 50% or greater, considering that the season length is a day, then this rule will get triggered. As you can understand in behavior rule, we are also catering in our learning phase, the errors as well. That's something that we talked about, and that is something that we are defining through these three parameters. We're looking at the error, we are looking at the deviation, and we are learning from the deviation as well and matching that with the present value. That learned one is the my extrapolated or my predicted value. If it differs by 50%, then this rule gets triggered. Again, if I click on next, the rule response page opens up and this is something that we have covered previously as well. It's same across all uh, the AD uh, based rule response pages. So I'm not going to go into the details much, but you can again, this patching event is selected by default. You can't uncheck it. You can generate an offense. Uh, you can send out an email alert and there are other actions as well that you can do. You might even want to execute a custom action that can also be done. If you click on finish, this behavior based rule will start working. So with that, we come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.